Hey guys, and welcome back to another Conan Exiles video. Today we are in the southern desert, southeast of the Sentinels, building a map tower. A few people have asked for a build based around a map room, and it's been a while since I have done a build like that. Therefore today I'll be building this tower to act as a sort of a monument that Exiles could visit to find their way around the Exiled Lands. As usual, this build was previously streamed live on Twitch, so go ahead and drop me a follow over there to see my builds in real time, and have input on them before they end up here on YouTube. As always, today's video is indeed sponsored by NordVPN. You can get 70% of a 3 year deal with NordVPN when you visit nordvpn.org slash eradyt, or use code eradyt at checkout. Watch until the end of the video to learn how Nord can help you unlock all the internet has to offer. So, without further ado, let's get started. Firstly, we're going to start off with, of course, the base plate. As you can see, I'll be building on this large rock, as I want the tower to be quite tall and to stand out in the environment. I'll be using regular and wedge foundations to make a large circular base plate that I'll try to blend into the rock as best as possible. I chose to use Arena mainly for this tower because, as you probably know, I have quite the fondness for the Blood and Sand DLC. However, I'll also be mixing in small amounts of Terranian into the build, along with using the debaucheries of Decato Bridges, but you'll see those when we get to it. Next for the walls of the tower, I built doorways on each wedge section to allow entry to the build, then building fences around the edge and building the walls of the ground floor three tiles high. Coming into the build I didn't really have a plan of how many floors I wanted to include, rather I just built until the height felt right. I wanted to include a central staircase through most of the floors, eventually leaning up to the open air map room at the top of the tower. At the time of building, I had some strange clipping issues with the central stairs that I believe were related to the recent patch at the time of recording. However, that seems to be fixed. I think it might have been hot fixed out. Whilst building the walls up, I built balconies on every floor to provide viewing platforms around the tower and also to add some extra depth and architectural detail. The tower would look perfectly fine without the balconies I think, but having the balconies hanging off the tower helped to make the structure feel a bit more important. I also adjusted the structure of some of the floors, changing the wall layout so it wasn't exactly uniform, and that helped to add even more depth and detail into the tower, which worked out very nicely. Thank you. 
In the end, I built three floors at three tiles high each, then building stairs on the balcony up to the top level of the tower. I had to extend out the tower at the top by one tile around the perimeter to be able to comfortably hold the map room, which actually turned out to look quite nice. I also added some pillars for some more architectural detail on the top floor, which I would later adjust to create some pretty interesting looking decorations. Finally, when the shell of the build was done, it was then time to of course furnish. Approaching the build, I've lit the tower with terrainian wall and hanging braziers, and added a long winding staircase around the rock to reach the tower itself. Given its height, the tower allows for some stunning views of the surrounding desert. Entering the tower, reach the ground floor. As I said earlier, this tower is designed more as a monument, and thus is decorated in a minimalist yet very elegant way, 
to imply importance and history within the structure. I've also tried to keep the lighting warm and delicate, so as to of course make the build visible, but not to overpower the natural warmth of the arena walls. The bridges on the balconies work quite well, and serve to add some interesting textural difference out on said balconies. It also helps to stop the tower feeling like one huge block of arena, which is definitely a good variance to include. Climbing the stairs on the top balcony will reach the top floor, where the map room is held. This is a spacious area decorated with bird-like structures that hold braziers. This is what I ended up doing with the pillars I placed at the end of the construction phase, and I think it works incredibly well as a decorative concept. Things are a tad tight up here due to the size of the map room, I do wish it was a little bit smaller, but I think it works well in allowing exiles to see across the exiled lands and of course plan their journeys. And there we have it, a map tower in the southern desert, southeast of the Sentinels. Thanks for watching, and thanks to the people who suggested I use a map room again. It's been a while, but I definitely did enjoy this build a lot. As some of you may know, I took a week off recently to, you know, just de-stress. So thank you for all the kind words during that time, and for sticking with the channel. And we are, of course, now back to normal. As I mentioned earlier, this video is indeed sponsored by NordVPN. If you want to stay safe on the internet and ensure your location can't be tracked by shady individuals, all whilst being able to unlock region-locked content like Netflix, BBC, ITV, Hulu, HBO and more, whilst maintaining blazing fast internet speeds, NordVPN is perfect for you. When you use my link or discount code, you can get 70% off a 3-year deal, which comes out to $3.49 a month or about £2.80 if you're in the UK, which is a bargain price for such a great service. The software is a small download and it's easy to use, one click and you are both connected and protected, and you have full access to the internet. Nord also has very strict policies on protecting your data, meaning you can browse in confidence. Visit nordvpn.org slash eradyt to claim this huge discount, or use code eradyt at checkout to get the best VPN service available on the internet, and also help to support me and the channel at the same time. As always, a big thanks to Nord for sponsoring the video.
If you've enjoyed this video leave a like and let me know in the comments below if you have any build suggestions for future videos. As usual, absolutely anything is welcome. Don't forget to both follow me on Twitch and join the fun on our Discord through the links in the description. And don't forget you can get 70% off NordVPN where you use code ERADYT at checkout, or you can go through my affiliate link in the description and the pinned comment below. YouTube is currently my full time source of income, so if you enjoy the content and would like to help support the channel so I can continue to put out the best content possible, do consider becoming a patron. There are multiple tiers of support from $1 to $20, offering many different benefits from a mention in every video to Discord roles, and even sneak peeks of every new video before anyone else. During the lockdown, most of us are still in. The video previews that are usually restricted to the $20 tier will be open for the $10 tier as well, so everyone's got a little bit more content to enjoy. The link to my Patreon is in the description, so if you'd like to support the channel, feel free to consider becoming a patron. On that note, a thanks to our patrons Sammy, Sadialot, Randar, Dawnfox, MK Pantheon, and M. Wartum. If you're new here, feel free to check out the rest of the content on the channel. There are new Cone Nexiles videos coming every Wednesday and Sunday, so if you like what you see, subscribe and ring the notification bell to be the first to see the next video, and to join us on the road to 10,000 subscribers. Again, thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.